Hello everybody, my name is VirusLord when I am back to bring you guys my last video on my Windows 2000 series. Today we will be looking at the Windows RTM, Windows 2000 RTM version, and we're going to be looking at service packs 1 through 4. So there was 4 service packs for Windows 2000 RTM, which were security rollups and bug fixes for the operating system. Now right off the bat we can see that it looks like a bit has changed. The branding no longer says NT 5.0, it is now saying Windows 2000. We're going to be going on the file uh, NTSF file system partition. So let's go ahead and as you can see I'm going right back to VirtualBox because I am able to finally install Virtual Editions so we can actually see it in nice true color and we can have a very nice resolution which is good for you guys, good for me, and it'll be a lot easier to actually see everything. So press any key to boot from CD, we will not boot from the CD, we will be actually installing Windows and it's going to be a lot quicker to install Windows too. Here we go, Windows, Windows 2000 Professional, built on NT technology. This is a lot better. So here we go. So we're moving on to the desktop. Here we go, Windows 2000 Professional. So you can see it's removed all references from Windows NT 5.0. It is now only Windows 2000, which is very nice. So here we go. St setup looks relatively the same. Nothing too, too different. Branding's different. The execution of it is a little bit more different, and it's very nice. It looks, it's pretty much, it's, it's the final product, really. So this is what you would see. So product key, I don't mind showing it because this is abandonware. Uh, not that many people use Windows 2000 anymore, so that's, there's that. So we're going to go to networking, typical settings. Here we go, installs everything. And we are done with the Windows 2000 wizard. Now let's head on to the operating system right now. So it's going to be starting up Windows. Here is the boot screen. Very nice, very nice. We're about to go right into the desktop. I believe I've already installed Virtual Edition, so we can see it in nice true color. Here we go. There's Windows 2000, preparing network connections. So as you can see, the branding's a lot different. And here we go, Windows 2000, and here's our welcome screen. <laughs> that welcomes us to Windows 2000, so let's get started. Let me change the resolution right here, because it's a little too big my liking right here you guys won't be able to see it very well here we go there we go so you can see a uh, lot has changed uh the icon has changed some icons have changed the recycle bin looks a lot different from what it used to be internet explorer has changed a little bit here's the internet connection wizard oops i did not mean to sign in with internet access with a modem i do not want that set up internet connection no i don't want a modem no <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, here we go. Let's go to, okay, I connect to a local area network, come on. It's okay. I don't care, <laughs> I have to enter something. Uh, just put my name, Iris. Here we go. Next, as you can see, this is completely different. It's asking me for like email addresses already. So <laughs> incoming server. <laughs> oh my god. This is, uh, this is good. Password, nothing. There we go, finish. This is the new IE, I believe this is IE 5.5, I believe? Yeah, pretty sure it's IE 5.5 and it doesn't even, <laughs> it's not even working for me. Let's go to programs, accessories, discovery system looks relatively the same, utility manager, that's new. Phone dialer, Windows Media Center, we still got pinball, we still got all of these. Calculator looks the same, nothing too different about calculator. Windows look nice and sleek, problem with the web page, so here we go. So we are on MSN, looking looking very nice. Let's go right to Google and see what, what turns back. Google, got good old Google. We're gonna see what YouTube looks like. If it'll let me go, oh, page cannot be displayed. All right, that's nice. All right, let's go to a Windows update. Will it do anything? And Windows update does not wanna work for me. <laughs> Why would Windows update work? Well, maybe because I wanna update to my service packs already, but <laughs> they've lost support over them. Here we go. Icons have changed. Everything looks similar. We got users and passwords. We got the system. Everything looks relatively the same. Display, as you guys can see, the display. Here we go. We can use the effects. What else? I think that's about it for now. Let's go right back to the start menu. 
go to where am I gonna go? Where am I going? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. So let's go to my computer. Let's go check out the what's changed. Oh look, they have those little um that it's in color there. Uh it's that uh style is gonna make a return in Windows ME, unfortunately. Um great. Yeah, next series is Windows ME. You guys are gonna love Windows ME. I I didn't I had a lot of fun trying to get everything to work. Um Windows ME is already a bad operating system to begin with. We still got Dr. Watts in here. And as a beta operating system, it's even worse, just saying. <laughs> it's not that stable. I had a lot of blue screens with it, so. I mean, what do you expect? It's it's a very rushed operating system. So here's Free Cell. Nothing too different about Free Cell. Here we go, let's keep going down. I don't think anything other than that has changed very much. Alright, task manager. Excuse me. Task manager looks the same. Dr. Watson. Gonna end Dr. Watson. We don't need you anymore. Alright. So I think that is about it for the Windows folder. We got narrator. Unfortunately, I don't have the sound card didn't work very well for me. And I didn't have the audio running, so the sound isn't gonna work very well. I'm sorry guys. Um but it is narrator, it is Microsoft Sam, just saying. Yeah, so you guys you guys all love Microsoft Sam, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure most of you have had an experience with Microsoft Sam. Which is very nice. Here we go. So uh, help looks pretty similar, nothing too different. Help. <laughs> Alright, voice. Yeah, same Microsoft Sam. You can change the pitch, you can change the volume, speed, you can change the volume, all stuff like that. And I believe that's Notepad. Notepad icon looks a little different, and top it looks a lot lighter. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, I think we're gonna go right down to the Win version, I believe, so we can see the Winver on this. Alrighty, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. There's Solitaire. Solitaire looks really the same. Solitaire hasn't changed at all. It's, <laughs> it just hasn't changed. Anyways, let's keep going down. View channels just takes me to Internet Explorer. Links, customized links, radio station guide, and doesn't want to show up. <laughs> Anyways, um, Windows Minesweeper, nothing too different. Oh well, and I got a mine. Okay, cool. Anyways, let's go back. Windows Manage, Windows Update <laughs> doesn't want to work for me. Anyways, I'm gonna make a quick cut here because I'm gonna actually have to uh, put in the operating system service packs, and that's the uh, about dialogue. So we're going to make a quick jump for the service pack so we can install Windows Service Pack 1. So I'll go do that right now. Alrighty, we are in Service Pack 1. We're actually doing the install. Now let's give a little bit of uh, background. What does Service Pack 1 actually fix? Well, Service Pack 1, it has a couple of fixes such as uh, for the base OS. It has some things for DDoS attacks from uh, Linux RPC client, a stop error related to removing a USB hub. It's, oh, it's changed a little bit right there. Um, Active Directory. So it relates to things such as the DNS errors. Mail servers with some things changing like that. It doesn't work very well. They fixed all that. They fixed some terminal services. They've also fixed some nine printing problems. Security issues such as with encryption. So now that we're done with Windows with the Service Pack 1, I, I pretty much really wanted to move into the Service Pack 2. Service Pack 2, well they had a couple of changes. So 16-bit um, MS-DOS base programs cannot change the label with create new file functions, so they kind of fixed that. The message reads floppy instead of CD. So if, if it's uh, install if Service Pack 1 is installed on the network Mac drive. So Windows 2000 doesn't let some laptop computers in C2, C3 states, and Windows 2000 starts slowly after modifying smart drive partitions. So pretty much some regular old fixes, big problems that were fixed in Service Pack 2, and now we're going to be moving on right into Service Pack 3. So... <laughs> so, a pa so they had a patch for the hyper ter terminal buffer overflow. There was a predictable name pipe that could enable privilege elevation via tenlet. Authentication error that could allow mail uh, relaying access, viola um, access violation of Windows 2000 driver 
that made the system reboot for pretty much no reason. Trusted domains do not verify domain membership of SIDs in authorized areas, so, that's, so there's that. Unchecked buffer and Windows shell could lead to code execution, which pretty much like viruses, stuff like that, don't want that. Authentication flaw in Windows debugger could lead to elevated privileges for viruses, malware. Unchecked buffer and remote access service phone line could lead to code execution, so again, viruses. These are mostly for viruses, some bugs, because some of these viruses can actually take advantage of these exploits, which is, you wouldn't want. To have that and in an age and there during that time viruses were running rampant windows nt for windows 98 95 and me it was it was bad anyways so windows nt looks like they changed it a little bit they made it more of the windows me style which looks very nice so i think we're done with service pack 3 so we're gonna move on to service pack 4 just gotta wait for me to install it so everything looks the same. Oh, look at this. Windows XP uh, icon there. Um, I believe that's this is the time when Windows XP first started getting out there, which is very nice. Oh, Windows 2000 CD not found. Okay, doesn't want me to do that. Alrighty, so I think that'll be it. System 32. I think we're going to go right down to the WinVer to see what window version it says. Where is it? Ah, oh, there you are. Say service pack three. So I'm gonna make a quick cut here so we can jump right into the service pack four. All right, service pack four. This is, has a lot more changes as well. Um, so there was a stop error message in a sys file. A computer with multiple processors and AGP video adapter hangs during setup, so that could do that. They fixed a corrupted GIF image errors that could cause memory access violations. Which is which is good. They need to do that. <laughs> Random access violations when multi-thread applications call in the set location function. Disk performance may degrade over time, so they fix those problems. Backup takes much longer when PAAE is enabled. The Windows File Checker utility cannot restore protected operating system files. That's obviously a problem, so they fix that. An error occurs in USB Hub.sys if it uses as a composite driver. No audio on a web on a web camera when you resume from hibernation. So problems transferring highly fragmented packets in NTIS. You may receive a tape drive requires cleaning error message when you try to back up. That's a problem there. Can I open a file that you move to the DFS share? CPU usage rises to 100% if you charge the battery slowly while the computer is on. That's obviously for laptops, but it's still a big problem. One hour delay occurs during the setup during the startup with the USB keyboard and PS2 mouse. And access violation occurs in spool lsv.exe. Slay so fixed all those problems. It looks like Outlook Express looks a little bit more different. It looks um much more different than what we are used to actually. So I believe that's about it for Windows 2000. Good golly, that was a long ride for Windows 2000. Not really, there's <laughs> that many videos. However, I will tell you Windows ME is a little bit longer and definitely the longest one on my series that you guys are going to be looking forward to is Windows Whistler. I'm going to have so many videos for Windows Whistler, you guys will absolutely love it. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Share these videos with everyone. Share it with people that you think would enjoy my content. And I am absolutely thankful for all the support you guys have been giving me. Definitely gives me the motivation to give you guys more videos like this. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. As always, Virus Immortable, signing off.